Alright, let's start. Go up to your polymodeling shelf and add a cylinder into the scene. We're going to use this to make our low poly treasure chest. Open up your channel box and let's rotate it 90 degrees in the X axis. There we go. And let's drop the subdivisions as well. Over here on the right, we have our inputs. Click on poly cylinder one and we can lower the subdivision axis from here. I'm gonna make it 10. So 10 is going to give us a pretty nice low poly look for the top of the treasure chest. I don't need the faces on the bottom though, so let's get rid of those. Um, to get to your component modes, hold down the right mouse button and we can get to the different components from here. Let's choose face and then let's do a box selection of the faces on the bottom there. And then just press delete. All right. Uh, next, let's make our own bottom section. So we'll switch to edge mode and let's double click the edge uh, over here. So any of the edges on the bottom and that should grab that entire loop. And what we'll want to do now is extrude that down. So to get to your extrude tool, uh, there's an option in your modeling toolkit. Click on extrude. And right now, if you take a look at the um, transform handle, you can see that it's oriented in this direction. I want it to be able to extrude downwards. So basically in world space. So to do that, we can either press W to go to our move tool, or we can click on this little icon here and that'll switch it to that world orientation. So now we can just need to click on this arrow and drag it down. Here we go. I'm gonna bring it down roughly to about here for now. Um, you can see on the bottom, there's a hole. So let's fill this hole. Um, go to your mesh tab. There's a fill hole option right here. Or what I like to do is use the marking menu. So I'm gonna hold down, oops, let me just um, double click that edge again. I'm gonna hold down shift and the right mouse button and choose fill hole. Either works. All right. Um, right now it's an end gun, so let's connect this edge to this one over here. And to do that, we'll need to use our multi-cut tool. So click on your multi-cut tool, and then we just need to click on this vertex over here, and then connect it to this one over here, and then press enter. All right, uh, let's press Q to go to our select tool. I'm gonna go back to object mode. I just wanna scale this out a little bit in this direction to give it um, an overall shape. So something like this for now. All right. So next, I wanna add a few more edge loops so that we can extrude some sections that will give it a reinforced look. Um, and to do that, we would grab our multi-cut tool and start adding edge loops. But what I'm gonna do instead is bevel the edges that I want to extrude out later on. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's go into edge mode. What we'll do is we'll double click this edge, hold down shift, double click this one, and then we'll add the bottom edges to the selection as well. There we go. So I have all those edges selected. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll press four on the keyboard. They'll um, enable um, wireframe mode and I can see the edges better sometimes this way. I'm gonna press five to go back. I have all the edges I need. And now we just want to bevel these edges. So over here on the right, there's a bevel, bevel option. Bevel option, there we go. And then click bevel. Um, and then you want to turn the chamfer off and then just play with the fraction. So right now I'm holding down control and dragging this slider. Uh, that way it doesn't drag too fast. And if you find you want to drag it even slower, you can hold down control and shift and drag this. And I'm gonna go with a distance at about maybe, probably right here is good. Maybe a little bit, bit less for me. Here we go. All right, if you take a look at the side section, you can see we have a couple edges here that aren't quite flat. Same with this side. So let's flatten those and align it to this edge over here. So to do that, let's turn on symmetry mode. First, I'm gonna go into object mode and select my object. Um, I'm gonna open up the channel box. You can see we changed some of the transforms. So let's just uh, freeze those transformations and then let's um, turn on symmetry. So because we froze our transformations, we can use either object or world symmetry right now. I'm gonna just choose world Z symmetry. So my Z axis is running this way. So let's choose world Z. And if we go into edge mode now, you can see that um, symmetry is working. So let's select these two edges and that should select those ones. And then let's um, scale this flat. So go into your scale tool, um, pressing R on the keyboard. And we, all we need to do is click on this box and drag it to that middle box or a little bit past it, right? Just to make sure. And now that's flat. And to align it to this edge over here, we need it to, sn to snap to one of these vertex points. So go into your move tool and then um, hold down V on the keyboard, 
and click on this arrow and we just need to m hover our mouse cursor to the vertex we want to align to, which is with any of these ones over here. So I'm gonna choose this vertex right here and then just let go. And now that edge is straight along those ones. All right. Next, um, let's add a few more edges. So in the middle, I want another section um, to give it a reinforced look, but also to create the, um, the keyhole area. So to do that, let's first exit um, symmetry. We'll go into object mode, select our object, and let's go into our mesh tools and choose insert edge loop. Open up that option box, just gonna reset this. And what we'll wanna do is choose multiple edge loops. And then we wanna choose the number two. So right now it's, by default, it should be two, right? And then click on any of these edges here and I'll add a couple edges perpendicular to it. And then if we wanna bring those edges a little bit closer together, we can go into our scale tool and just scale that in. I'm gonna make the middle ones a little bit thicker than the outside ones, just to make it a little bit different. And I'm gonna go with something like that. All right, gonna close this up. Uh, next, um, let's add a couple edge loops around um, the center section. So grab your um, multi-cut tool and I'm gonna hold down control on the keyboard so that I can see the, where I'm adding the loop. And what I wanna do is add one loop right about here. So this one is going to be where the top of the treasure chest and the bottom would separate. Um, and we'll give that illusion later on as well. I'm gonna add another loop maybe right about here. Um, this is another section that will extrude out to give it that reinforced look. And then finally, I'm gonna add one more loop maybe down here um, just to help create that keyhole area. And you'll be able to see that in a little bit. All right, so now we have all the loops we want. I'm gonna press Q to go to my select tool and let's switch to face mode. And we're gonna start uh, selecting all the faces we need to extrude. So I'm gonna hold down shift on the keyboard, um, click and then double click to grab that entire row. And then I'm gonna do the same over here and the same for the bottom. So I have all those sections. For the side sections, I want to extrude this area as well. So let's grab those and it grabbed those as well. Perfect. And then for the top, I want all these ones over here. And for the side sections, I want these ones over here. Um, for the front, I also want this piece right here. So these are all the faces I've grabbed. I don't need the faces on the bottom though. So let's unselect those. To unselect these, I'm gonna actually hold down control on the keyboard, click on this one and double click this one. That should remove that entire row. We'll do the same over here and then we'll remove these ones as well. So right now we have all these ones selected. Just pressing four again. That looks pretty good right there. And now we're ready to extrude. So let's click our extrude button and we'll give it a bit of thickness. There we go. I'll go with something like that for the thickness. And um, let's extrude the bottom corners as well. So let's grab those faces. It'll give it a stronger base. There we go. So I have all those corners selected. And now all we need to do is click extrude again and give it a bit more thickness or a bit, a bit of thickness. Now go with probably something like that should be fine. Um, all right. So now we have pretty much like the shape of our treasure chest. And I'm just going to turn on wireframe on shaders so we can see it a bit better. So it's looking pretty good, but I'm going to show you how you can deform this to give it a different look quite easily. So first I'm going to select the treasure chest and we're going to give it a lattice deformer. So go up to the deform tab. We will make the keyhole in a second, but um, go to the deform tab. And if you open up the option box, we can change the, the divisions here. But what I like to do is I like to change it from the attribute editor later. That way I can see what I'm changing. So just click create for now and you'll see your lattice cage and then open up your attribute editor and go to your lattice shape. So right now um, you can see we have two, five and two, right? And I can see that five is the T divisions because I can see the, the five uh, loops running this way, right? I don't really know what two and three are, but I, if I change it, let me just change it to three, I can see that this one is over here, right? I don't really plan to change this, but I'll keep it at three. And for the T divisions, I only want three going this way. So I'm gonna change this to three. There we go. There's also a slider if you wanna use that. Um, and then for the front, I'll probably add 
an extra one as well. So we'll go three over here. There we go. All right, so now this is what we have going on. And now what how the lattice works is if you hold down the right mouse button, you can go and choose lattice point and you can select any of these points. And if you move it, we can move it and it'll deform it proportionally. So it's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna undo that. What I'm going to do is actually box select the ones in the middle, make sure I have all those selected, and I'm going to scale this. So I'm going to scale it outwards, right? Just to change the shape of it. And you can see how powerful it is to really deform your object. And I'm going to also move this up a little bit. If I want, I could scale it inwards and create a different style of chest, right? Um, you'll see this type of um, style in some games, but I'm gonna go with um, the other direction. There we go. And then maybe I'll go with there and maybe I'll move it maybe just a little bit up. There we go. And then for this top section, maybe I'll go grab these top points and move this up just a little bit. Um, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. And then when you're done, all you need to do is select your object and then delete the history because if I open up the outline right now, you can see we have a lattice object. If we were to delete the lattice, this would ret return to its original shape and we don't want that. So let's select our object, delete the history, and now our lattice is gone. Here we go. So we have this new shape. Quite quickly, right, we we're able to make something new. Let's create that keyhole area now. So I'm gonna go into face mode. Let's close this up for now. And let's select the three faces in the front here. I want to extrude those out a little bit um, first. So I'm gonna open up the modeling toolkit, click extrude. And then this time, instead of clicking this icon, I'm just gonna press W to go to my move tool. Just switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna bring this out. And then I wanna scale this flat as well. Um, it's up to you, but I'm gonna scale mine flat. Let's go into my scale tool and click this box and move it to the center. Here we go. And then what I'll also do is I'm gonna go into edge mode and I'm gonna grab these edges over here and maybe scale those in just a little bit. There we go. And I did mention that we would kind of show that the top and the bottom of the chest are separated a little bit. So we'll do that next. So let's uh, go, so actually we're in edge mode. We'll double click this edge here and then let's bevel this edge. So click bevel. And for this bevel, I want to give it one extra segment. So let's make it two for the segments. And then let's lower the fraction a little bit. Probably to somewhere right here is good. And then, um, actually, let me make it a little bit less. There we go. And then let's grab this middle edge. So double click that one and let's scale that in. There we go. And now it feels like this chest could open. Um, now let's make that keyhole area. So go into face mode and we're gonna select these two faces and let's offset that. So click extrude and there's an offset option right here. So we'll give it a bit of an offset and we'll scale these edges to make it look like a low poly keyhole. So I'm gonna bring this one in, maybe move it up a little bit. This one I'll scale in a little bit, move it up as well. And the bottom one I will scale in and bring it down. Bring this in a little bit more and bring this in a little bit more. And there we go, we have a, a low poly keyhole. Let's extrude that in, so go into face mode. We'll select these two faces and then click extrude. And I'm gonna push this in and what I'll do is I'll turn on x-ray mode so I can see it a little bit better. That way we can see how far we're pushing this in. I'm gonna go to about probably maybe right here is good. And then I'll exit, exit um, x-ray mode. <laughs> and there we go. And then let's harden the edges on our treasure chest. So I'm gonna select this um, and go to mesh display and harden edge. There we go, just to give it a nice low poly look. If I turn off um, wireframe on shaded, this is what we have going on. And if I turn on ambient occlusion, you can see a little bit better. So this looks pretty good. You can turn that off. Um, so we're almost done. Uh, this treasure chest has some faces on the bottom. So most of the time, an object like this would sit on the ground. And unless it gets tipped over, you'll probably want to delete those faces because they just add to the poly count and they take up UV space. So let's get rid of these faces. So let's go into face mode. 
Um, for this one, I'm gonna hold down the tab key and do a, a drag select, right? We could keep dragging everything, right? But what I'm going to do instead is grow the selection. So let me show you how to do that. To grow the selection, you need the greater than sign key. And to get to that, just hold down shift and press period. And that'll grow the selection. I'm gonna grow it to there and just delete it. Now I just have these faces on the corner to delete. Just a fast way to get rid of them. And then we'll delete these. So now we don't have those faces anymore that don't get seen. And then uh, finally, I'm gonna bring back the grid. You can see that our treasure chest is sitting below our ground plane. So before you take this into say a game, you definitely want the pivot to be on the bottom. And that way when you bring it into your environment in the game, it's sitting on that surface when you drag it into the, your scene. So let's go into our move tool and move our pivot to the bottom. Hold down D then V. We'll click on this arrow, drag it to the bottom, let go, hold down X and drag this back up to um, the grid, the surface. So yeah, here you go. Our treasure chest is a complete, and now you have some new tools in your toolbox to create fun little props like this one. All right, so that concludes part one of this tutorial. Join us in the next one when we look to add a few extra details to our low poly treasure chest. Until then, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.